All right. Oh, my. It's so good to finally be here, get, get on stage. I'm, I got into town yesterday. I'm just, like, tweeting and blogging about being in Montreal, like a little schoolgirl. I love, I love doing stand-up, but um, I'll be honest with you. My, my parents are not too thrilled that I perform stand-up comedy. You know, they're, they're typical immigrant parents. They wanted me to grow up to be a doctor or a lawyer. And I argue with them all the time. I'm like, Ma, you don't understand. Women love that. Women love men who know how to tell a joke. She goes, no. <laughs> Women love doctors who know how to tell a joke. <laughs> Not comedians who know CPR. See, it doesn't work <laughs> all the way. Kind of impressive. And they get on my case about it, too. They won't stop. They're like, Brian, you're in your 30s now. Time to settle down. Get married. Fall in love, Brian. Fall in love. I'm like, Ma, I'm in love with myself right now. She goes, you could do better. <laughs> this year for Lent, my parents gave up on me. Now, thank you. My father, he's another one. My dad, the man has said maybe two words to me my entire life. You know, we never had that close father and son bond growing up. And he recently got himself a new iPad mini. He, I swear to God, he loves this thing more than he loves me. He just would carry it around, bragging about it, looking at the thing. <laughs> I don't even have an iPad mini or an iPhone. I have one of these Samsung phones, you know, and, and it's got like, this really cool eye tracking technology where it tracks your eye movement. When your eyes have gone down to the bottom of the screen, it figures that you finished reading that web page and it'll turn, turn the page for you automatically. It, it's a phone, it's a phone that watches your eyes. <laughs> one time I was holding it, I looked at it and I called it dad. It immediately stopped making eye contact with me. <laughs> Just like that. Immediate. <laughs> Other than stand-up comedy, sometimes people say to me, uh, they, they, want, they always ask me if I do voiceover work. They always ask me about voiceover work because I know I have a bit of a weird voice. doesn't exactly match my appearance. But they, but they always ask me. <laughs> I know. I, I get that a lot, though. You do voiceover work, you voiceover work. But they say it in the most backhanded, compliment sort of way. You know, one time, I swear to God, a guy said to me, he goes, you ever... You look like you could star in a kung fu movie and then dub your own voiceovers. I was like, wow. That is both racist and great career advice at the same time. I get it, I get it. It doesn't match my appearance, I know. I mean, the universe, you know, it's gotta have a sense of humor. You know, I sound the way I do, but Mike Tyson sounds the way he does. I guess I sound like a heavyweight boxing champion, but I look like a hot dog eating champion, so. <laughs> doesn't work out, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm, uh, I am Chinese, or as most of you people call us, Korean, and <laughs> I, I'm in an interracial relationship. Yeah, my, my girlfriend, she's Nigerian. Yeah, so very different cultures, and, and people sometimes ask me, oh, you're dating someone who's so different from you. Would you really marry someone so different? Would you really have kids with somebody who's so different from you? And I'm like, yeah, why not? You know? If you love somebody, you love somebody. I don't care. And maybe that's the point of, of, of evolution. You, know, you want to diversify your genes a little bit. Right? I think that's the point. And, and let's be honest. Chinese people, you know, we could benefit from a little diversity. <laughs> you know? Have you ever been to China before? Ever seen pictures of China? The land of one billion people, three haircuts. You know? <laughs> We can use a little bit of color in that part of the world. It's not gonna hurt us. I'm glad I'm in a, in a relationship. Um, uh, my dating life has always been through uh, ups and downs, ups and downs. I've been through some dry spells. I'm not even gonna lie to you. you know, it's, I've been some real bad dry spells. One time I, I go to my doctor's office to get myself tested for uh, my, my STDs. And at my doctor's office now, he's got this new office policy. Before you get your blood drawn, you gotta fill out a questionnaire about your recent sexual history. And they ask you really personal questions. One of the questions was, how many women have you had sex with in the last two years? So I filled it out, I handed it in, I swear to God, the nurse took one look at my answers and was like, oh, really? You're gonna waste our time with this? Why don't you just give her a call? <laughs> it's 
getting heckled by the nurse. Anyway, listen, stand-up comedy is, is, is not easy. You know, I love doing it, but it's very difficult. Sometimes I wish I was a musician. Musicians have it so much easier. You know, so musicians can get on stage and do a cover version of a Beatles song or a Bob Marley song and instantly win over the crowd, right? Comedians, we don't have that luxury. We, we, we can't do the same thing. We can't cover another comedian's joke to win you guys over if things are going bad for us. You know what I mean? For example, I love Jerry Seinfeld. Love Seinfeld. Love Chris Rock. Love Chris Rock. Somebody once asked me, you love Chris Rock? You love, would you blow Chris Rock for a million dollars? Would you blow Chris Rock for a million? I'm like, a million dollars? Of course I would. But it's going to take me a long time to save up and pay him a million dollars. You know what I mean? I don't have that type of cash lying around. But still, I can't cover a Chris Rock joke on stage just to win you guys over and get you guys on my side. I can't be on stage and all of a sudden go, I love Chinese people. I hate chinks. I love Chinese people. Boy, I hate chinks. Chinks always want credit for shit they supposed to do. Talk about, I take care of my kids. You're supposed to take it, your kids. You're eating a motherfucker. What, you want a fortune cookie? See, I can't get away with that. Or did I just get away with it? All right, thank you, everybody. Matt Broner.